In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a material from scratch, including its textures. For starters, I'm going to show you an easy way, and that's with textures.com. No, they don't sponsor this video. Making specific needed materials is just so much faster with this website. There is a free version, but it has a limited amount of stuff that you can get. So get what you need, wait 24 hours, and do it again. Once you're there, you're going to want to go to 3D scans and just find the material that you like, and then just click on it. We're going to go with this concrete. The textures that you're always going to want to get is at least the albedo and the normal map. These other ones are kind of optional, but I would also go for height and occlusion if they have it. And honestly, at that point, you might as well get all of them, especially if you have the premium version. At that point, go ahead and just download the textures that you want and just drag them into Unity. If you're looking for where to put the roughness texture, Unity does come with the Autodesk shader. That includes roughness and everything else. We're just going to duplicate one of our materials. You'll probably have to create your own, and we're just going to name it Concrete. And then we're just going to drag and drop in our textures into their respective places. Fix the normal map, and for us, we're going to drop the smoothness and test it out. Obviously not the right scale, so we're going to drop its tiling to 0.25 on both X and Y. If you want, you can get into UV editing to fix the scale instead of just adjusting the material with Pro Builder or U Modeler or Blender, whatever you use, but we're not going to do that right now. This is what I suggest using for your materials, that in the asset store, but for those of you that want to do it yourself, we'll show you how to do it with Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop, create a new document, and its width is going to be 1024 pixels, height 1024. We made a resolution 300, which it should probably just be 72, but that's fine. This, for the most part, will match our textures that we pulled off of textures.com. And now we're going to go into Google, do a quick search for concrete textures, and double check to make sure the images you're using aren't copywritten. I think I'm just going to use this one right here, and instead of saving these pictures, I'm just going to copy it. Go back into Photoshop, paste in the picture, resize it by hitting Control T. Once I get it to where I like it, I'm just going to use the Rectangle Mark tool, and then I can cut it and paste it into its own layer. I am going to keep the old layer, and you'll see why in a bit. And then I'm going to go into Filter, Other, Offset, and the horizontal and vertical need to be roughly half of the height and width of the image. Now this already looks pretty good, but we're just going to clean it up a tiny bit with the stamp tool, especially since it won't look as good when it's applied to a larger object. Now this is why I actually like to keep the larger image. That way I can still copy and paste from the same image, but not the same square that we'll be using as the texture. Now I'm simply going to clone from the background image and paste into the foreground image. Now your lines are probably going to be a bit harsher than mine, so let's take a little more time blurring them out. Now I'm going to take the rectangle mark tool again and cut out our edited image and paste it again into its own layer. Once that's done, I'm going to go back again and hit Filter, Other, Offset, and that's just to make sure that there aren't any blatant lines anywhere. If there aren't any, then we're ready to export this as an albedo. To do that, you're just going to hit File and then Export As if you want it as a JPEG or Export as PNG if you want it as a PNG. I like to keep mine as JPEGs because they take up less space. Now you can name it whatever you want, but I would highly recommend keeping Albedo in the name of the Albedo. Same thing goes for Height, Occlusion, or any of that. Once that's done, we can jump back into Unity, and for us, we actually save the texture to the Unity project. We're going to create a new material, and we're probably just going to name this Concrete too. Drag our texture onto our material, and we can go ahead and put that on our wall. And it already looks pretty good, but it's too shiny, and it probably needs a normal map. It's also clearly repeating, which you can go ahead and fix yourself by just using the stamp tool and getting rid of those darker colors. To make it less shiny, we can just drop the smoothness and then jump back into Photoshop to make our normal map. This is going to be really easy. All you have to do is go to Filter, 3D, Generate Normal Map. Wait for that to load. Once it's set up, just click OK. And then we're just going to export this under the same name, except with Normal instead of Albedo. And then once we have Unity back up, go ahead and drag that into our material, hit Fix Now, and it's already looking better. But the last thing that we can do in Photoshop super easily is make a height map. So once you're back in Unity, just hit Control Z, do Filter, 3D again, and this time generate height map. Once again, we're going to hit OK, then export it. This time we're going to change the name to height. And then we can drag it and drop it into our material in Unity. Now I don't always see a huge difference with the height map, but it can be really important. But this is why I stress out just at least making sure you have the albedo and the normal map. And again, if you want to get rid of those obvious repeats, just jump back into Photoshop and keep editing it until you're satisfied. But that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. We try to answer as many as possible, and we'll see you next time.